Hey there, Builder Blog. Zachary Lytle, Captain of Scorpios here, and this is week two in Japan. As Diana, Dan, and I were running around this amazing country, we started to ask ourselves a question. How is a country that has so much history with robots, and specifically robot fighting, never entered a battle bot? This is a question that really bugged us, because if you look into their past, their history, Japan has so many robot firsts, and so many things that revolve around fighting robots. You can find it in almost every aspect of their culture, from their version of Disneyland, to anime, which has giant fighting robots in it, to their very first comic book, Astro Boy, who was a fighting robot, to one of their most popular series, Gundam, where people dream of piloting giant fighting robots. Japan built the very first robot. It was a tea-serving robot before they used steel for springs. It was all clockwork. You can find it in their toys, their TV shows, their uh, anime, their comics, their manga. Every aspect of Japanese life and culture has fighting robots in it. So why have they never built a battle bot? That's the question I hope in our last week here in Japan we can answer. So let's try to break this down into a few questions. First off, do they have the builders? I want to show you this. This is the high school. Yes, I said high school, not college. High school national robot sumo tournament. Any one of these robots looks like it could be a master of the box rush and would give Hypershock a run for its money when it comes to speed and maneuvering. These are high school robot builders. And the reason they are competing so hard in this contest is you first have to win your school event, then your regional event, then you can go to the national level, is the winner of nationals each year gets an automatic acceptance to Tokyo U, which is basically the Japanese Harvard. And so if you could go win a baseball game or a basketball game and know you'd get into college, you would try really hard at that. And it is absolutely flabbergasting how fast these robots move. Now, unlike BattleBots, they are not allowed weapons that damage their opponents. But some things I want you to carefully look at is, even though they're not allowed to damage their opponents, they have definitely figured out some different tactics. One is the big, I call it the fighting bull style, where you put out big flags on each side to try to deter, uh, attract your opponent's sensors. Another one is putting something draped behind the robot to try to trick them. You saw the string trick to flip another robot. And these are all different fighting tactics they've come up with. Uh, part of the rules is you have to start as a certain size, so that's why you see so many of these robots transform in order to expand. Just look at the height that last guy got. <clears throat> Other robots use the transforming feature to make their wedge wider, to help them catch something. Other robots just go for straight power. Or clever programming, like that robot that just ducked out of the way and let their opponent run out. But look at that, that robot did damage the other robot, not because it had a saw or anything, but just because it hit it so hard. And if you look at the referee in the background, you'll actually notice he's wearing baseball shin guards. And that's because some of these robots come off this field at incredible speeds. So, I would say if you scaled any of these robots up, it would be a major BattleBots contender. And not only this, they're not fighting via radio, they're actually fighting autonomously. Meaning, they've got sensors and software to boot. So this is an easy yes. Uh, there is absolutely Japanese builders out there that I think could make a masterful battle bot. So this brings us back to our first part. Why haven't they? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the Holy Land itself. The if nerd you, capital of the world. If you're a geek, if you're an otaku, you know exactly where we are. This is the mothership. This is Akihabara in Tokyo. This is where every nerdy thing you could possibly want is located. It's or, 16 square or, city blocks. Or sexy nerdy thing. Or robot-y nerdy things. 
and we're about to go find all of it. So come on, let's Almost see what we can find. It. Almost all of it. <laughs> so as we went around this 16 block area of nothing but robots and fighting robots and anime and geek stuff, uh, we noticed something. We found Transformers that transformed themselves, which that was amazing. We found every Pokemon game ever, ever made, every DS ever made. Um, literally, there is a specialty shop for whatever you could think of. Uh, we never found a BattleBots toy in all of this. In tower after tower of nothing but collector's toys and toys. Like, seriously, this is an eight-story building that has nothing but old toys in it. And... After exploring all eight floors, we never found a BattleBots toy. And uh, <clears throat> this got us thinking, do the Japanese even know about BattleBots? And what did you find in Akihabara? It's Baymax with an orange on his head. <laughs> like a capybara. All right, Diana, the sacrifices for our craft. We are crammed in a little tiny elevator. Where are we going? To help. <laughs> <laughs> we are Apparently going, these are all the pre-orders. We are going to floor eight because that is where all the toys are. Oh. Oh, that's the that's the 18 plus area. Uh-oh. I might need to censor that out. Luckily, neither of us are qualified for that. <laughs> floor five. Are you gonna count every floor? Yes. So after going through 20 different giant toy towers, uh, seriously, it's, it's like eight Toys R Us's stacked on top of each other in every single tower. Uh, none of these clerks had ever even heard of BattleBots and they didn't recognize any of the photos I showed them. And in fact, none of them had even heard of the TV show, which I found so surprising. So after our trip to Akihabara, we actually went south to the village of Iniyama. Uh, two of my old college friends, Hiro and Hillary, actually live in this town now. Hiro was an exchange student who came to America for college. And I asked them uh, where you could watch BattleBots here in Japan, and he said you couldn't. He said the only way he even knew about the show was through my Facebook and our Facebook updates. So you might not know this, but I'm on hollow ground right now. I am at the site of the birthplace of robotics. And you might be thinking to yourself, that doesn't seem very robot -y. Because when most people picture robotics, they, they picture integrated circuits, they picture servos and actuators, they picture big batteries, copper wires, but that's not actually where it got its start. Um, steampunk, did it first and it was done right here in japan in iniyama and it was actually done for a uh, a worker shortage and clockwork tea serving robots were actually the very first robots ever made and one of the reasons they're defined as a robot and not just a really extravagant way to serve tea is you would set a variable and the robot would complete the task of delivering a full teacup and once it got to the table and the person picked up the tea, the robot then would return to the kitchen to get its next load. And it's brilliant. It's, it's done just with clockwork pieces from a, a, a cuckoo clock maker. But this went down in history as where the very first robot was made. And I, uh, I wanted to take you here. There is an entire museum with a recreation of the fabrication shop and uh, recreations of the robots themselves. 
So as I asked around, I found out there was a robot fighting show. And although this history is fascinating, let's get back to the main topic at hand. So what kind of robot fighting do they watch in Japan? So if you've ever seen the beginning of Big Hero 6, you have a pretty good idea what this is. Uh, in the States, we refer to this contest as Robo-1. These robots have anywhere from 24 to 36 motors in them, and they are piloted by a human. They actually have a controller that's set up a lot like Smash Brothers, where they do have general movement, but then they have button sequences to perform different moves. Uh, each robot is custom made and custom programmed by their builder. And the you're not allowed to damage or use a saw like the uh, the Big Hero 6 movie showed. But you are encouraged to push, shove, and uh, topple your opponent. You gain points in the competition by knocking your opponent over without falling over yourself. And uh, I have to say, it is absolutely incredible to watch some of these crazy contraptions because i cannot imagine building a biped robot and programming it to stand and walk much less sumo fight but builder blog are you starting to notice a pattern here in the sumo competition we saw earlier they were also not encouraged to damage each other and in this competition these robots almost cost as much as a battle bot and they are also not encouraged to damage one another they're encouraged to pull off wicked cool moves, like that skating kick right there. But it seems like Japanese robot competitions really have a focus more on precision and spectacle, and less on who can put the biggest blade on their robot and cut the other robot in half in one hit. Like seriously, he just grabbed this robot's knee and sumo-plexed him. How freaking cool is that? But... I believe Japanese robot competitors seem to have a disdain for damaging each other's robots. So is that it? Is that the answer, Builder Block? I remember back uh, when I was competing at Robo Games, which had builders from all around the world, and had Sumo and Robo One there. And I remember I asked a Robo One competitor if he would ever build a heavyweight. And he told me to my face I was crazy. And to break the robot every round was terrible. So, as I've gotten to know more about the culture, I've seen Japanese competitions in person, I'm really starting to think this is the answer why we've never gotten a Japanese team in BattleBots. Will Builder Vlog, like so many other sports legends do at the end of a challenge or a journey, now that we have our answer to why the Japanese don't build battle bots, we're going to head to Disneyland. Okay, Builder Block. We're here at Disney Sea, and we're currently waiting in the line for Journey to the Center of the Earth. It's hot. It is hot. We're in a volcano. I believe I can fly. Well, we're going vlog. It's our last day at Disney. And it's our very last ride. We are here at the Beauty and the Beast ride in Tokyo Disneyland. And it's, uh, well, 
We're about to be a guest. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> we're gonna put their service to the test. And we're gonna try the gray stuff, because I delicious. hear it's delicious. We don't believe them, so we'll ask the dishes. <laughs> Transform. <laughs> 